Jetzt äh, kommt als nächstes ein Beitrag äh, im Rahmen äh, der Ratspräsidentschaftsveranstaltung. Ähm, äh, Sie wissen, es wurde gestern ja auch schon kurz angesprochen, dass NEMO, das Netzwerk der Europäischen Museumsorganisationen, äh, seit äh, relativ früh seit März, April äh, schon begonnen hat, äh, Umfragen zu machen bei Museen über die Auswirkungen, die äh, die ähm, Schließungen, die die Pandemie auf die Museen hat. Äh, und ich freue mich, dass äh, die Kollegin Elisabeth Rosenberg von NEMO äh, uns etwas über die Ergebnisse der Umfrage, die gemacht worden ist, äh, vorstellen wird. Das macht sie in englischer Sprache, da wir auch etwas internationales Publikum haben. Dann vielen Dank, Frau Rosenberg, und bitteschön. Yes, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, yeah, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you online today. Uh, as was stated, my name is Elizabeth, and I am here representing the network of European Museum Organizations. Uh, so let's see if I, in fact, have control over my PowerPoint here. Yes, I do. We are good to go. So uh, before we dive in a little bit about us, uh, we were founded in 92 as an independent network of national museum organizations within the Council of Europe, representing, and today we represent thousands of museums uh, across 40 countries in Europe. We advocate the instrumental role of museums in contributing to poverty reduction, social resilience, gender equality, sustainability, We focus on the educational, economic, social, and collections-based values of museums. And we also focus on digitalization and professional development. And as an advocacy network for museums, we have taken note of the creative and often digital approaches that museums have taken to better address their communities, especially in recent months. So of course, we recognize the importance of today's conference topic. So what we will be discussing today, um, I will be focusing on some of our findings from our survey and report that was published earlier this year that was focusing on um, the response to the closure and COVID-19 pandemic that swept across Europe um, with a special importance on those findings that have been digitally relevant. Um, additionally, I will be discussing a little bit of what we have learned since then and what we plan to do next. So uh, with the help of Erasmus University Rotterdam researcher, Trilce Navarrete, who specializes in the economics of digital heritage, uh, we put forward a voluntary and anonymous survey to see how museums were coping with the pandemic and subsequent closures and what consequences were foreseen. Uh, we included questions regarding closures and economic impacts, digital engagements, staffing transitions, among many other things. Uh, we collected about 1,000 survey responses between March 24th and April 30th. And uh, these came from museums in 48 countries, the majority of which were in Europe. Our report has led to many recommendations for museums and policymakers. And in the past months, we have seen some results associated with those findings, including creative digital use and engagement with and through culture throughout the world. During the onset of the pandemic in Europe, when museum closures swept across the continent, we were, of course, impressed to see such a proactive response. Museums quickly shifted their focus to addressing the needs within their communities without hesitation. And this was the case with many great examples around the world. From donating masks and gloves to hospitals to collecting objects and stories of people in order to preserve and learn from this moment, as well as creating digital tools to engage and comfort people staying at home. Museums have proven agile and up to the task of fulfilling their social role within museums. Though on a less cheerful note, of course, uh, the crisis has had an intense economic and social impact on the sector as well. And while some museums found their budget minimally impacted initially, Museums in touristic regions uh, reported early on and have continued to report a considerable loss of income. Um, here you can see that uh, the majority of museums responding to our survey initially were losing about 1,000 euros per week during the onset. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, thanks to the dissemination efforts of our efforts, our efforts of our network, we do consider that these responses um, formed quite a representative group of European museums. Um, as you can see, most of the responses were in Europe. And furthermore, um, about 30% of respondents um, stated that their museums were rural, 43% stating urban, and 27% coming from a capital city. Staff size was also distributed across a representative spectrum, with 36% uh, of museums claiming 50 employees and up, and 64% operating with a staff of 20 or less. So the majority of respondents uh, worked in historical museums, 22% uh, worked in uh, art museums, science, natural history, and ethnography museums made up 17% together, and the last 21% were a variety of other types. So I mention this because we did get quite a broad spectrum, um, mostly mid and small, and yeah, so that's why we definitely take our results forward. So the majority of museums, of course, had to stop their projects and their community initiatives, including volunteer programs. And uh, while most museums did not report laying off staff, many freelancers, for example, were unable to continue their important work with museums. Now, there was a need to compensate for this loss of funds, and most turned towards government support. In fact, it's interesting, the reason I put this particular graph up here is it's interesting to note that once we move away from the option of public funding, it gets increasingly more difficult for museums to tap into new sources of funding. This graph here shows that less than 20% of museums said that they would look into alternative sources. Now, the message behind that is not so much that museums were satisfied with their financial situation in the moment and didn't need the help, but rather you need some resources in order to open up new sources of income, to activate donors, to organize crowdfunding, to come up with new services and products to offer. And uh, yeah, not all museums have those capacities directly at hand. Furthermore, with museums uh, doors closed to the public, uh, they needed to find a different way to provide access to their collections and connect with their self-quarantine audiences. This meant, to a large extent, taking the experience online. And this was realized in a variety of ways to varied levels of success, but across the board, it has further demonstrated the importance of digital competence in cultural organizations. After three weeks of the, uh, of the closure to the public, as you can see here, already 80% of museums um, responding to our survey had increased their online activity. Uh, and this, of course, increased generally the visibility of digital cultural heritage on the internet around the world. Now, it is important to note, of course, um, that while 30% of museums changed staff tasks to online activities, only 13% mentioned adding resources in order to compensate there. Successful digital platforms and activities require specific skill sets, as well as thorough evaluations of what works and what doesn't, and all of this requires new thinking and expanded support. So without increasing resources, uh, which activities increase? <laughs> well, of course, um, those that do not require so much additional financial resources, extensive experience and skills, um, were the ones to be stated as increasing the most. And I'm sure this doesn't surprise anyone, uh, because museums, of course, had little notice of this closure, and this is the most accessible way to engage online. I think the, the past months have shown us how important this digital transformation is for the sake of contemporary museum work and operations, as well as to connect with audiences and guarantee access to our heritage even in crisis times. Culture is one of Europe's biggest assets, and in an era of big and fast technological change, we need a more effective transformation strategy for museums. Museums should increase transversely their activities online and uh, digitally within their departments. We must not wait for the next crisis, rather be prepared for it. Now, all of that being said, I of course don't want to uh, give the impression that the um, easier to access digital activities such as social media are without value. That's certainly not the case. Um, there is, there is uh, quite, quite a good aspect to having an active social media presence as we saw during the pandemic or during initial closures re regarding the pandemic. 
during uh, the social media campaigns such as Museums from Home or Between Art and Quarantine. Um, these were great examples of successful and engaging social media activity. It's valuable, but of course, it's not everything. In our survey, museums reported that next to social media, both educational and collections related materials, including video and film content, were most popular with online audiences. And this value added content is what we have to invest in and it requires financial resources, skills and knowledge. If museums are to stay relevant in the future, then they need to maintain a strong presence that allows them to connect with their communities at all levels and remain open to participation and co-creation. And this requires uh, technological and digital development of those organizations. And it also requires thorough evaluation and responsive offerings. So last month, we followed up on the developments over the summer by asking our full members, our national museum organizations, uh, how museums were doing in their different countries and if trends had been identified. Uh, we're doing this because we are now working on a follow-up survey, which will also be released to the public um, and will be launched at the end of this month, very soon, <laughs> to look specifically at the areas of income loss, mitigation, implementation of digital museum offers, and new metrics of success. Now, if we are looking at the most recent check-in with um, our national museum associations, we see that the majority of museums are open again, not at full capacity, of course, um, as we are respecting hygiene measures and safety regulations. Feedback from four countries indicate that museums have closed or are likely to close. Now this is unfortunately um, a bit more severe than the initial predictions that came out of our survey. Um, I can imagine that that, is, that discrepancy is for multiple reasons, in particular that um, many museum professionals are quite passionate about that work, so this question can be considered quite personal. Um, additionally, although museums are open, the visitor numbers have dropped by 50 to 75 percent. And this does not only impact the income of museums, but it calls for museums to rethink audiences, activities, funding opportunities, and further adapt to the situation. So have museums kept up with this digital development over the past six months? Well, uh, from our recent internal survey, uh, we have found that almost three quarters of museums uh, have either continued their increase of digital activities including creating new formats, offering hybrid solution, or hiring new staff, or investing further in digital infrastructure. Although uh, we did get about 30% of a response from our full member representatives stating that digital activities peaked at the springtime height of the pandemic in Europe. So looking at this new reality for museums with only a fraction of vis uh, physical visitors, the digital offers will clearly maintain their importance beyond this crisis. So which challenges remain for digital engagement? Well, digital liter literacy, not only in upskilling our staff, but also digitalizing sustainably and responsibly and considering the digital divide among our audiences, as well as value added services where engagement is key, uh, being able to evaluate which offers are working and adjust for them, among other things. The fact that digital offers are not just an add-on to the physical museum collection, but a means to engage with audiences should be translated into investments in digital services and infrastructures in the future. Digital capacity building must be a priority for museums if we want to overcome the idea of digital technologies merely being a tool for disseminating cultural heritage rather than being a means of creating together. So Alyssa Pellegrini, surveyed uh, 200 Italians about their online museum habits during the lockdown. She learned, as we did, that people usually go for something interactive or educational when they seek out an online museum offer or experience. She also learned that the demographic and socioeconomic characteristics of online audiences are usually the same for our in-person museum audiences. So museums online are confronted with the same access for everyone problem that real museums, physical museums, have been discussing for a long time now. She draws the conclusion that museums need to better understand their online visitors in order to design their online offers in the best and most relevant way. 
So what can networks do in order to continue supporting museums both during this crisis and aiding in their digital transformation? Well, as I said initially, our survey provided revelations about the durability and the agility of our museum sector. It also shed light on what is needed to better prepare for our future. Following our survey, NEMO put forward recommendations to stakeholders at all levels regarding these topics. Economic support to ensure the continuation of our museum activities and the security of our staff. Digital support to allow museums to better embrace their potential online general crisis awareness and preparedness, including the value of relying on each other as we do within our network, and also pointing to the fact that museums must ready themselves on behalf of their communities in order to weather future storms, including consequ further consequences of the climate crisis. Now, I, of, of course, also we uh, focus quite a bit on finding new metrics of success, moving away from only visitor numbers to a broader assessment framework that includes the digital extensions, accommodates more qualitative factors in our framework, and that reflects museum social and educational potential. These recommendations were put forward by NEMO to stakeholders at all levels, and we were very pleased to see um, that they have had some success. Uh, we've seen conversations uh, come up between policy, uh, between policymakers and representatives from our full member organizations. And additionally, there was just launched a Horizon 2020 call referring to NEMO's study, um, which seeks to support small and mid-sized museums in their digital transformation. Taking a closer look, however, at uh, specifically digital recommendations, our survey showed that museums online are important extensions and complements of the physical museum. And engagement in digital activities results in more digital visitors. Recommendations of investments and additional resources are, of course, a given and within our report, but how can we learn and make services better if we don't have an idea of the impact of our activities? For this reason, museums need a sound metric and framework to benchmark online visits and to assess the success of their online offers. This would allow for more adaptability and agility, and as stated before, museums must be willing to connect with creatively across the spectrum, embracing different levels of engagement. Finally, I believe that we have a role to play in shaping the discourse in our sector not only focusing on immediate consequences and their solutions regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, but rather we must be bold and unafraid in our response and anticipation of the future needs of our communities. Museums, as I said early on, have had an incredible response in supporting their communities, uh, not only in this pandemic, but they've also opened their doors to protesters, to evacuees from natural disasters, during the height of the pandemic, they donated personal protective equipment. They can and they must go further. At our network, we encourage that uh, museums continue to act as labs and experimenting future scenarios, help to inform, understand, document, explain various crises, or even offer crisis preparedness courses to the public, support local, fair, green operations, provide public spaces to keep and cultivate a democratic and open society, maintaining this very important continuous evaluation and discourse, and of course, offer immediate help in emergency situations. All these things sometimes seem a bit far removed from our main goals and points uh, in museum professional work, but I think that this does have a circular impact on our communities and that that big picture mentality or perhaps big circle mentality, uh, I think will only continue to be important. So with that, I will say thank you so much for your time and for your invitation. Uh, participation has been a pleasure and I believe we will move into uh, Q&A, uh, but if we don't get to anything, then of course uh, my email is listed. So thank you very much.